My name is Tim Rio, host of Digital Health Live here in San Francisco, UCSF. Uh, with Lynn Chu, who's a partner of Kleiner, Perkins, Caulfield, and Byers, a little VC fund people might have heard of. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So, nice to see you. Uh, we just had Jack um, Young here on studio, and now we have you up. Great panel topic. The debate was basically, what does it take to avoid the funding valley of death? And so, what's your background? Yeah, so I actually have... Uh, investing experience, so was previously an enterprise software investor, and then also a healthcare operator experience, uh, launching products internationally in the U.S., selling to providers. So digital health really brings both of those worlds together at a firm that has a long digital history as well as a long healthcare investing history, and so we've really been able to synergistically take these two worlds and bring them into digital health, which is led us to be one of the most uh, prolific healthcare investors in the space. Awesome. So so do you guys then look at digital health companies differently than, say, an enterprise software startup or a consumer play? Well, I would actually say from a financial point of view, we don't look at digital health differently because we need to have we're what we call a balance fund or a diversified fund. So every startup that comes through Kleiner Perkins and goes to our investment committee has to go up against the same committee, right? So we don't have, well, this is what we need to see in digital health versus enterprise software or consumer. They all have to be big winners. We have to have see that ability for companies. Now, how we work with the companies and how we build them and think about them is different, but we have to see that same kind of valuation and potential for a return for the fund. So what would you what what were some tips or tricks you see uh, companies doing to get through this funding gap? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's some great accelerators out there that can help. You know, we're affiliated with Rock Health. Um, we also know a lot of the other accelerators that are in the area and space. So I think from, there's not really a trick. I, I can't say there's this one level you pull and magically, you know, the money appears on trees, right? But it's really a lot of hard work. Um, and I think some things that we like to see is a strong team. I think in a digital health sense, having someone, typically either the founder is from what I'll call the digital world, so they're from gaming or otherwise, or a founder is coming from the healthcare world. But I think smart teams balance both of these areas because this is a sector that's early and there's not a lot of what I'll call seasoned digital health entrepreneurs who have been in and out of three companies, right? So creating these teams that work, I think really being thoughtful about what your bigger vision is, even though you might be very specific in executing to a certain business model today, what does tomorrow look like and how will that enable you to be a big company? Um, I think really thinking about the business model and likely having some traction. Um, and you know, everyone says, do you have a revenue number? Do you have some kind of metric like that? We don't have hard metrics like that, but being able to see that strategics or business partners value what you're creating and actually paying for them versus let's say pilots that might be pro bono in a sense or otherwise. You convert it to cash. Right, exactly. And I think what we really have to understand is you know, quickly I think healthcare will become a B2C world, but where we are right now is a B2B2C world, and in that environment, it is more, a bit more like enterprise selling if you're selling to employers, to payers. Longer to cycles. Buyers, longer cycles. So really being thoughtful, just going and saying, I'm going to a provider, is actually probably you have to really take that and take it a deeper layer is what kind of providers are you going to academic centers? Are you going to nonprofits? Are you going to f independent physician groups? Maybe you're going to clinics for employers. There's a whole sub-segment and being smart to reduce that time for your business model and for revenue traction. Because I think if you choose the right providers that are leaning forward, that are um, really thinking thoughtfully and taking that real step, you can reduce the time and the cycle that it needs. I can tell you your experience shines through having kind of worked in, in the different spaces, so that's great. Well, how do people reach you? Yeah, so you can go on the Kleiner website. Um, my information is there and happy to talk with, you know, even if you're seed stage and you want to bounce some ideas off, 
We also have a later stage fund, so we're not just early stage investors in digital health, we also do late stage. So we are really flexible and love to just really create connections and collaborations in the space. You're a lot of fun, Lynn. Nice to meet you, and uh, thanks for being on the show. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.